Hello and welcome everyone to the Euro Speedway Lausitz Ring here in Lausitz, Germany for the seventh race of the uh, 25th season of the Arkansas Elite Series. Zachary Fitzwater is on the pole today with uh, Jesse Turner and Aiden Shepard behind him. Uh, Kitsune Hashimoto is in fourth position there. This track is a very fast, high-speed one, but requires drivers to um, manage their tires quite uh, aggressively because this track burns right-side tires because it's kind of a super speedway, but it's not. Uh, you need to have a good drafter on this track, but you also need to be able to manage your tires or else you will not last very far today. So with that being said, let's get on to your full starting grid. Zachary Fitzwater is on the pole with Jesse Turner on his outside. Turner needs a good run after a couple of... He, Turner has not done very well in Europe, so uh, Turner needs this kind of a run. Aiden Shepard and Kitsune Hashimoto with Tyler Thaber and Johannes Rudavara. Eric Monaco and Do It For Dale Jr. are in the next row there. That's going to be important because this is a track that Faber and Fordale have circled on their schedule to be something that they could be strong at. Vince Freeze and Jacob Hart in the next row. Uh, DJ Curtis and Tim Fiegel in the next row back. Pericles and Hart. Noah Hart needs a good run. Hopefully this can be his day. Alex Spencer and Mean Ratzenberger. Perkins and Lothar Ravine. Haupt and Maverick Force. Roush and Kenny Myatt. Myatt did not have a good qualifying run today. Neither did point sitter Cody Lamas with Clara Irwin, Vanderpesh, and Ray Hall, who Vanderpesh's season's kind of fallen off the rails the last couple of weeks. Maddie Myatt and Tanya Jackwater, and then Trek Tauger starts last. Uh, not a great start for the FNS Brigade. So, Zachary Fitzwater, third in points, leads the field down to the green. I believe somebody did not line up well in the back, um, or somebody didn't get lined up. Somebody must have stalled or something, but green flag is out here. Away we go. Did everybody make the start? I believe they actually did make the start. So that's a good sign, actually, because I didn't think they did. But as you're going to see, oh, Tyler Thaber already going for the lead here uh, under Aiden Shepard and Zachary Fitzwater. But like I said, remember, tires and keeping your momentum is going to be important around this track as uh, Thaber is going to cycle into the lead. The inside line is the best line, but you do burn up your tires a bit more down there. So if you keep being aggressive like that, it's not gonna last long. And it's all about trying to make sure that you uh, stay in this race as well, because this race can have some rather large accidents in it in the past. As Thaber and I believe that is Shepard are out to an early uh, lead right now. Noah Hart, he was way down the order and he's already up fighting for the lead of this group. And actually, Kenny Myatt's going up the grid as well, so up the field as well. So this could be a very important race for some of these drivers here as Thaber leads this race. Thaber is a super speedway driver. He is a, one of the experts around super speedways here, and this is definitely a super speedway, despite having to let off the throttle a little bit. Fordale and Hart now are going through the field. This, these are the kind of tricks that Noah Hart also kind of cut his teeth on, as it looks like Shepard from Texas is going down low to take over the lead of the race. A lot of the ARC drivers really like Aiden, or ARC former fans really like Aiden Shepard, and have expected Shepard to kind of step out. He is a Southern driver from uh, Texas, so I'm expecting Aiden Shepard to do well on this kind of a track, even though we're in Germany. This just shows how turbulent the pack can be around here, as uh, Fitzwater kind of slunks, uh, slinking his way down the order to 14th and four laps, so not a great start to the race for him. We did have an accident as Jackwater was trying to... Oh, I'm sorry, that was... Uh, Jackwater went around because somebody got into Vanderpesh. They did not throw a yellow for this, and I'm kind of surprised. We're going to take another look at this here, and Vanderpesh gets turned by Madeline Myatt down into Jackwater, and Jackwater would drive back to the pits and fall out of the race, so Tony Jackwater's season, despite the late start, has not had a good start either. Aiden Shepard would dive underneath Tyler Thaber for the lead of the race, and I believe he would actually take it here. This is the kind of thing that we really like to see out of top, uh, that we've expected out of Aiden Shepard. It's the top five is kind of broken away here as the rest of the field kind of got held up by Jackwater before she came into the pits. So um, the top five are all kind of separated out here as uh, Shepard, in one of the dominant Patronus cars, takes over the lead of this race. Uh, the other two Patronus cars have won this year. However, uh, Shepard has not. So Shepard has been clearly the lowest performing out of the Patronus team. However, this could be a good day for him. Tyler Thaber would get the lead back, but Shepard would fight for it again. And now you've got Noah Hart and Do It For Dale Jr. getting very racy here. 
uh, towards the back. They're trying to get up the order as well. Noah Hart has needed a race like this. As DJ Curtis has kind of fallen off the cherry wagon a little bit off these uh, top four cars. As the back markers are kind of closing in now that they're kind of organizing themselves in a single file line. Wow, Kenny or Fitzwater's going underneath uh, Jacob Hart there. Uh, he went way low there to try and get going. Uh, we do know that the Ford uh, Mustangs that the uh, Roush uh, Menards Racing Team drives uses isn't it actually the best at this kind of a track. They're not very good at tire wear, so expect them to struggle a little bit. Tyler Thaber would cycle back to lead us. It's three wide for third in the back as Noah Hart is looking underneath Fordale and Curtis, but Curtis has a lot of straight line speed. It's just that car in the best of the corners. And as you see, there goes Curtis. Oh, wow, do it for Dale Jr. Got a really good run out of the outside there. As now Shepard is fighting back now on Thaber. So these two drivers have been really going after each other, but it's all about who can hold the most momentum around the corner. Driver that we have not seen up front at all this weekend has been Kenny Mayan. A miserable weekend trying to get a hold of this track. Mayan has never been the best at Euro Speedway and isn't the best super speedway driver either. Uh, he is third in points and has three wins on the season. Nearly got a fourth one at Mallory Park. But um, right now we're not seeing a lot out of Kenny Mayan right now. Where is Cody Lamas, the points leader by uh, a number of points? He's in 11th, so this could be a Decent run for uh, Cody Lamas right now. It was an outside pull for uh, Jesse Turner, but Turner has fallen way to the back of this grid. He went immediately to the outside and lost a ton of momentum up there. We know that car is fast. It's just you can't do a whole lot with it. And actually, on the inside, he's losing even more momentum down there. You've got to be able to hold your car as much momentum as possible. And way down low is not where you're going to hold it. So you've got to know the best place to hold your speed. And we have the big one here. Tyler Thaber's upside down. Kenny Myatt's in it. We got cars all over the place. I think the lead pack wrecked. Or somebody in the lead pack crashed. Uh, Madeline Maya was in it. Shepard's going to beat Curtis back. But something happened with Tyler Thaber, and that's what caused the incident there. So more Tyler Thaber bad luck as he's driving to the corner here. He grenades that motor right there. Driving along at a snail's pace there. Hart Fiegel get Oh, Fiegel clips him, and that's when he goes around, and then the pack is coming up to him. That's Jacob Hart, Madeline Mayan, Ben Wallace, Ravine was in it, Roush was in it, Hop got in it, and Kenny Mayan at the end did. Uh, Tauger also, I think, just stopped on the track to maybe avoid the accident. I don't think Tauger got any damage, but I don't believe. But, um,. Yeah, that was a big accident. Truck Tauger has not had the best start to his season as the FNS Brigade was expected to be a lot faster than they were. And you're going to see this accident take place in front of him. He's already backing off the throttle a bit here. Not as much as he probably should be, but... Uh, surprisingly, that accident was not bigger than it was. We're on board with Ben Wallace the early points leader. He was in seventh position. And actually, the car in front of him, Fiegel's the first car to make contact. And well, Lotharavine really had nowhere to go. Tough break for Fee or for Lotharavine there. His cars all over the place are trying to avoid this incident. The wildest ride of the day had to go to Jacob Hart, though. I believe he went over in this incident. The accident takes place in front. He's already kind of letting off the throttle, but then Ta Thaber was there, and well, around he goes. That's his day done. I want to talk about a car that had a lazy spin here. It was Maverick Force. Force is kind of just going down here. Just kind of gets clipped by the 98 here and just goes for a lazy spin right there. I'll tell you this, Jesse Turner got really lucky to miss that one too. One final avoidance here with the aforementioned Jesse Turner who had a terrible start here. You're going to see Scott Roush was definitely involved in the accident. And he went out of the race out. Turner got a little bit of a side clip there, but a good avoidance there by Jesse Turner. All in all, seven cars were taken out in that wreck as Aiden Shepard leads the field back to the green, but he was relegated to the outside line as Do It For Dale Jr. and Cody Lom is cycled to the lead of this race. Here is, here we go once again here. It's all about survival now. That accident was caused by a mechanical failure, so uh, hopefully we don't have a, hopefully that was our big one out of the way there, but we've seen a couple of, like right there, uh, one of the Ferraris nearly got into Sean Perkins. That would be Rudevara nearly got into Perkins there. 
and down the front stretch they go. Three wide does not help your cause here. You gotta be single file as Fitz Freeze, uh, Cody Lamas, do it for Dale Jr. Uh, of course, uh, Fordale and uh, Lamas are teammates as uh, Freeze is now trying to keep up with these two. And you're gonna see, maybe because these drivers are gonna go side by side, you're gonna see Freeze really close up here on the two leaders as Fitzwater and uh, that would probably be the 12. We're uh, going to the field. I believe Kenny Myatt's out. I believe, yes, he is out. Oh, maybe not. Is he out? Is that him? Nope, he is out. Never mind. As Aiden Shepard is desperately trying to get up through the field, we know he's got one of the best cars on the grid. Uh, now that Faber's out of the race, we know he's got one of, he's probably got the best car on the grid, so he's got to get up through this order quickly here. Zachary Fitzwater is one of the major championship contenders so far this year, and with Fitzwater doing this well, he won the other super speedway race at Daytona this year. However, this is a much different track than Daytona. This track requires um, tire management, while well, Daytona's more of a crapshoot. Um, but they both actually rely a lot on momentum, so Fitzwater could do well here. Lamas now is going for the lead on his teammate, his younger teammate. Uh, not going to get it, though. This is the type of track where we expect to do it for Dale Jr. to do really well on. He was an, When ARC came back for a little bit there, he was very good on the super speedways and kind of cut his teeth at the Daytonas and Talladegas of the world down in the ARC uh, levels a couple years ago. And he was really good in Arkansas Lights on... Uh, the super speedways. This is the type of track where we expect uh, the FEI cars to do really well on it, with Thaber falling out basically from the lead. Um, we're not being disappointed there by them, which is kind of a shock, which is kind of not a shock, but which is kind of not normal for their performances this year. And we have another accident! Sean Perkins turns Fitzwater, and Fitzwater, get on the brakes! Oh, he is on the brakes according to telemetry, but it looks like he's that grass is wet down there, and oh, Eric Monaco, hard there. Oh boy, that was a bad accident. That was a really bad accident there. Fitzwater's tumbling. I'm concerned about Zachary Fitzwater there. Very, very concerned about Fitzwater there. He went literally roof first into the uh, wall there, and these cars have, there's been a lot of protect roof protection since the Jeffrey Finn guy fatal incident at Road America a number of years ago, but oh boy, a hit like that can be detri hugely detrimental there. Eric Monaco, a driver who's had no luck this year, just kind of gets taken out by Fitzwater, and that was kind of on Fitzwater's fault there for not, he did apply the brakes, but the grass was wet, but I don't think he did nearly enough to avoid an incident there. And we're going to take a look at this incident here. This is what happened with Fitzwater. So he's just trying to keep it under control. And, oh, thank goodness Fitzwater is getting out of his car right now with assistance there. But he is getting out of the car. Both drivers got out of their cars. I was very concerned about both of these drivers after this incident. That was a heavy, heavy hit. Um... Both drivers were taken straight to a local, local medical center. They did get out with their own power, but um, the infield care center just thought it was a better idea just to send them straight to a local medical center. So we'll get more injury updates as we get them. Do it for Dale Jr. Leads his teammate Cody Lannis to the green, and now we've got Freeze go already going for the lead here. And I thought I saw another yellow out there, but obviously not. Freeze now passes Lamas for second position as now Aiden Shepard now is on a mission to try and get up the order. He's the only remaining Patronus car as Fitzwater's in the hospital and Myatt's out of the race. Um, Alex Spencer's going up through the grid as well. There's, I believe, Hashi... Oh, that's Rudavar, I'm sorry. Going through the order as well. Lamas takes over second position as Aiden Shepard now is in third over uh, Lamas there, although Lamas should have the advantage. Well, no, Lamas doesn't have the advantage. Here goes Shepard for second. Shepard has a heck of a car right now, but he's got to take down Do It For Dale Jr. Right now, Do It For Dale Jr. has been controlling this race over Shepard, Lamas, and Freeze with the uh, Rudavara and DJ Curtis closing in. Uh, Noah Hart also has worked his way back up the order as well. 
And with uh, the big one out of the way and hopefully everybody all right from that second incident, uh, Monaco, I think, was taken to the hospital just for precaution there. Um, they are going to definitely win probably at Monaco want to talk to Fitzwater though because that was kind of stupid because uh, he didn't use hardly any braking pressure we found out so that was kind of stupid on uh, Fitzwater's part but um, we do hope he's all right but that was one of the sillier incidents I've seen in a while as here comes Shepard again trying to file his way behind Cody Lannis and, uh, yeah, I should probably mention that there are two slow cars out there that were involved in the first wreck. Fiegel and Vanderpesh are still out there hoping for more calamity. And they will be uh, nice roadblocks for the field to get by if they catch them. Jesse Turner has worked his way up back up the order. He was all the way down at 22nd. Now he's up to 8th again here as the field is kind of uh, spreading itself out a bit here. A little further back, you've got some three wide racing. I saw, I believe, Hashimoto, Perkins, and Tauger were three wide. Uh, Got to be careful about doing that kind of stuff around this track. We've already seen that the handling when you're in a two wide situation isn't the, exactly the easiest. As now Fordale and um, Lamas are now going to do battle for the lead here. As, oh, three wide a little further back. Noah Hart nearly lost the rear end of the car there. He had to save it and uh, nearly ran over the back of... Uh, Turner at the same time, so that actually forced Turner down low to avoid an incident there, so Jesse Turner's been proven to be really good at missing accidents, except the ones that he gets involved in. Cody Lamas would cycle his way into the lead at the end of the halfway mark here. Um, at the halfway mark, rather, but do it for Dale Jr.'s car is just a bit quicker and is going to go for the lead here. As Aiden Shepard is quietly running in third position with Johannes Rudovara in fourth. This is the kind of cars that we thought would do well on these super speedway type ovals. Uh, Aiden Shepard's really good at mastering, at managing tire pressures. He just doesn't have a lot of luck. And now you're seeing um, Shepard is doing his best to try and keep up with this group. And Shepard's car, I don't think it's as strong as Fordale or Lamas, but I think with the right pit strategy, Shepard could win this race. And the leaders are coming up to Fiegel and Vanderpesh here. We're going to see how easy it's going to be for Fiegel and Vander, for Lamas, the leader, and Fordale to get by them. They're side by side on the track. Wait, did I see a yellow? No, I thought I saw a yellow for a second, but obviously I didn't. So we're going to see how this, how Lamas is going to deal with them here. And they are going to be held up here. Fordale, oh, they're going to go way down low here. That's a good, good move there, but it looks like Fordale... Oh, Fordale had to back way out of it there. And Lamas... Oh, Fordale's losing a ton of speed there on the inside, so Lamas is actually going to have a pretty big lead out of this. And now the rest of the pack is coming up to them. The rest of the pack now has caught Vanderpesh Fiegel. And, well, now that you got Lamas and Fordale streaking off into the distance... They're trying to get by these two drivers, and the inside is not where you want to be. Watch Vince Freeze here. Freeze was on the outside. He's going to get a bunch of cars here. As uh, Rod Rudavara had to back way out of the throttle to avoid not spinning. Do it for Dale Jr. Pitted on that uh, last time by, as did a couple other drivers. A couple cars stayed out, though, for a couple of laps. That being Rudavara, Hart, Turner. I believe Shepard and a few others pitted. Shepard came in with... Um, not sure where the 48 of Lamas is. Lamas had already pitted. So we're going to see where Lamas comes out in relation to Fordale. And uh, Lamas is, I think, going to get the spot on Fordale. But uh, it's mainly where the pack is going to be slotting in. Because these cars, I don't believe, have pitted yet. Yeah, the, these three up front have not pitted yet. And they're a lap ahead. And here goes Lamas and Fordale. They're going to blast by Shepard there, who was basically all by himself on the pit road, so he needed a little bit more than that. DJ Curtis now is closing in on Shepard, and Freeze is also back there as well, so... Ooh, Lamas and Fordale, they're battling really hard there. The car that did beat them out, though... Oh, no, Hashimoto. I thought that was Rudavara for a second. I'm like, did Rudavara beat them? But obviously not. 
yeah, they're racing side by side. Hashimoto's going to be a problem, I believe. Ooh, somebody's on pit road still. That was Noah Hart. Just came in, I think, from the lead. That's a close battler between Shepard and Curtis. But right now, Fordale and Lamas are duking it out right now for the lead of this race. As Hashimoto pits. However, Fordale and Lamas' huge lead would be vanquished by a debris yellow with only about... They're only going to leave them with about 10 to go, I believe. So, oh, it's going to be important, though, that many cars get by Fiegel here. Because Fiegel is a lapped car. And I think there'll be single file lineup as uh, Shepard and Curtis do get by. I believe it's going to be hard for Turner and Hart to get by though as well. So on the pit stop cycle, the two FEI cars actually pitted here because they thought they could use the better tires. Uh, as did Vince Freeze, DJ Curtis, Aiden Shepard, and a couple other drivers in the back, being Ratzenberger and Spencer. Up front, you've got a bunch of cars on the tail end of the lead lap, and Jesse Turner, Noah Hart, Nick Pericles, Johannes Rudevara, Roman Rahal, Hashimoto, Perkins, and a number of other drivers, Irwin, did not pit. So now you've got a bunch of drivers who haven't seen really the front of the field. Hart has at the front of this field. And then you've got a bunch of cars on better tires way in the back who will be able to go around corners quicker. With eight to go, I'm not sure who's going to win this race. The other thing, too, is Jesse Tur or I'm sorry, uh, Cody Lamas and Fordale have had the best cars all day. Can they get up to the lead with the amount of time required in order to win this race? I don't know, especially with the pack the way it is. And they've got a lot of slow cars in front of them. However, the track is wide, and you can make moves on it, so we'll see what happens. Jesse Turner gets going. He has to get by Fiegel quickly. He knows that. Noah, he was held up a little bit there. Noah Hart's already jumping to his outside. Cowger gets away as the lap car, and no one's going with Noah Hart. Looks like Hart's going to back out and have to slot back in there. Pericles is going for the lead, but Turner continues to lead this race. Where, what is the progress of Fordale? Fordale's gotten by all the slow lap cars. Lamas hasn't yet. Neither has Curtis or Shepard. I think realistically they are done here, but Fordale's looking very, very quick here, getting through the field here. The field has caught Trek Cowger again here. Rudevara slides down there. Turner continues to lead this race. And Fordale's making the inside work with his new tires. There goes Vince Freeze underneath Fordale there. Freeze was another car that came in there, and he's actually going to take over that spot from Fordale here as Turner has a big lead now. With Noah Hart in second, taking second back from Rudevara. This is the run that he needed. Look at Ro oh, Roman Rails a lap down. I apologize there. Vince Freeze now is the car, the highest running car on new tires with Lamas right behind him. Okay, here we go. Now do it for Nails, the highest running of the uh, new tire people. He's going down low. Oh boy, this race is getting a little bit hairy. And now we've got Turner on the outside of Tauger. The lap car of Tauger makes it very difficult here. Noah Hart's going to try and slot underneath to take over the lead of the race. It looks like Hart's going to do that. Fordale, look where Fordale is now. He's right in this mix now. Rudevara's going for the lead, but that's the last thing anybody wanted to see was Fordale up at the front of the field. Now Noah Hart has to do his best to hold off. Some drivers like Do It For Dale, who's in second position. And on better tires. But Noah Hart is doing his best out front to hold everybody off. And Fordale's been having a tough time getting by the Great Wall of Tauger. And Tauger's been a bit of a nuisance for him. But now Fordale has cleared him. Can, but here comes Lamas way down low. But Fordale throws the block on his teammate. Hart took the long way around there. That's going to give Fordale the lead of the race, I believe. Fordale dives for the lead. Lamas is behind Hart. Do it for Dale Jr. goes to the lead of the race. So there was enough time for him to get back up the grid. And now Noah Hart has fallen back. And it has the other cars that have not pitted fallen back. So the top three are cars that have pitted with Vince Freeze, Cody Lamas, and Fordale in the lead of the race. Freeze now is trying to get a move on Lamas here. 
Lamas, I think, is going to extend his point lead today. Unless if an accident were to take place here. Freeze has no help there as these drivers have so much more tire pressure, right? Or tire, uh, new tires right now, more grip that uh, no one can keep up with them. As Fordale is going to take the white flag. Do it for Dale Jr. His father, the great Do it for Dale Sr. Won the races in the black Goodrich 33 car. And now Do it for Dale Jr. is on the final lap heading towards his first AR Arkansas Lead Series victory. His father was a great ARC champion, winning the most famous races in that series, the Southern 500 at Daytona and the Southeastern 600 at Atlanta. But now Do It For Dale Jr. is gonna win his whole first race in the Arkansas Elite Series at Euro Speedway Lautzitz. And a thrilling showdown with his teammate, Cody Lamas and Vince Freeze. DJ Curtis fourth, Noah Hart fifth. Sixth place is gonna to go to Mean Ratzenberger. Great to see Ratzenberger that high up there. Perkins seventh, Turner eighth, Shepard ninth, and Rudavara 10th. And the fans back home in North Carolina are probably going absolutely crazy as Do It For Dale Jr. wins the race. Cody Lamas is going to extend his point lead in second. Third goes to Vince Freeze, fourth to DJ Curtis, fifth to Noah Hart, sixth to Ratzenberger, seventh to Perkins, eighth to Turner, ninth to uh, Shepard, tenth to Rudavara, eleventh to Hashimoto, twelfth to Force, thirteenth on the last car on the lead lap is Clara Irwin, Tauger, fourteenth. Pericles, 15th, Ray Hall, 16th, Spencer, 17th, Vanderpesh, 18th, Fiegel, 19th, and the long line of cars that are out, Eric Monaco, who is still in the hospital, no injury updates on him, we hope he'll be in the car, we we'll hope he'll be ready for Monaco, Zachary Fitzwater, another driver that we're kind of concerned about, hope he's going to be cleared for Monaco, but I'm not sure, I'm more concerned about Fitzwater than Monaco. Uh, ben Wallathera Ravine in the, uh, finishes 22nd, Scott Roush 23rd, Haupt 24th, Kenny Mai 25th, Jacob Hart 26th, Thaber 27th, uh, Madeline Mai 28th, and Tanya Jackwater 29th. Let's take a look at your King of the your King of Europe points and your uh, regular race points. So your King of Europe point standings goes to right now is Cody Lamas with Vince Freeze in second, Zachary Fitzwater in third, uh, with Perkins fourth, fifth goes to Curtis, sixth goes to Monaco, seventh is Fiegel, eighth to Madeline Myatt, ninth to Pericles, tenth to Shepard, and then as you start going down the order here, they're still mathematically eligible because there's 50 points up for grabs at Monaco. But um, once you start getting down here, you're going to get a little bit shaky here. And Tyler Thaber, who's had no points, is technically mathematically eliminated. So Tyler Thaber cannot win King of Europe because Tyler Thaber has not won any race, has not gotten any points so far in King of in Europe. So looking at your full scale points here, Cody Lamas sits on 138 with Sean Perkins with 117, Vince Freeze with 114 with Curtis and Pericles on 111. That's your top five. Fitzwater on 109 with Kenny Myatt on 104, Ben Wallathera on 99, rookie of the year candidate there. Noah Hart starting to climb his way back up the order, but he's still a long way behind Lamas. Matty Myatt, Tim Fiegel, Maverick Force, Christian Vanderpesh, Eric Monaco. Force is becoming a big factor for uh, Rookie of the Year as well. Turner is starting to turn on the afterburner a little bit. They tried an aggressive strategy. Didn't really work out today at um, Euro Speedway. Uh, sad for him. Spencer didn't uh, kind of a Rookie of the Year candidate. Shepard, I thought he, he was on the right strategy. He just got held up by lap cars on that restart there on that last restart there, which kind of screwed him over. Haupt, Je uh, Jacob Hart, Clara Irwin, Do It For Dale Jr., Johannes Rudavara, Ratzenberger, Hashimoto, Thaver, Ray Hall, Jackwater, Tauger, and Roush all there. But notice how those three, those four new cars are starting to catch some of the back markers here, especially like your Ray Hall, who has been very quick. Even though Roush is the fastest of the four cars there, he's the lowest in points simply because he can't seem to put a race together. 
So with that being said, the next race is the Grand is the Monaco 100 kilometer race, which is a one-off race. So we will see a number of extra cars on the grid, and some of our uh, main points contenders may not qualify and probably won't qualify for the race. That'll be interesting to watch, but we'll see you next time.